Uh, my name is Caitlin Angeletti and I'm a physician assistant student from Duquesne University. And I'm Melissa Hernandez. I'm a PA student from Seton Hill University. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about behavioral health, mental health, and just sleep promotion and how to promote both of those things. Um, so do you want to start talking about some yeah. of the melatonin things? Yeah, so, so we recently gave a talk um, for a, a DBT skills group and we talked about sleep hygiene. And the biggest thing with sleep hygiene is to understand the word hygiene. You know, we talk about hygiene all the time, like, oh, you go to your dentist, you get a little cleanup. Well, we have to kind of clean up the way we sleep. Um, it's important to, you know, kind of set yourself up for success, you know. So Caitlin and I came up with some things that, that people can do or avoid to, you know, to promote good sleep. So the first thing that's important to talk about is, you know, why do we even, like, what is sleep? You know, like, why is it this big thing that has to be, you know, nurtured and protected and taken care of? Well, it starts in your brain. You know, there's a, a center in your brain called the hypothalamus. It's kind of like the motherboard, so to speak, or like the central hub of um, all the hormones in your body. And every night and every morning, the hypothalamus is sending out signals to your body. Um, at night in specific, the, the hypothalamus talks to your pineal gland and it releases melatonin, which everyone knows, you know, uh, helps you go to sleep. So it comes out because the sun goes down, we start feeling tired, and that's kind of our chemical cue. We have a visual cue to go to sleep and we have a chemical cue to go to sleep. Well, the issue is that we have different lifestyles and we work late night shifts and we get overwhelmed and there's too many projects to do so we fight our melatonin and we don't go to sleep on time so we throw off our circadian rhythm our clock and that's also in the hypothalamus so once again it's the motherboard um, so every night our, our melatonin is released we go to bed and then every morning our cortisol kicks in and that's kind of like our our wake-up hormone it's kind of like our internal coffee so to speak and it kicks in from six to eight in the morning and Technically, you know, our, our circadian rhythm is already ready to go. So based on our own natural body, we have our wake up and we have our sleep signal. So we have to learn ways to embrace that and go back to the basics. Yeah, so some of the ways we can actually kind of incorporate these this natural clock, we want to get it on a normal rhythm. Um, the, like she mentioned before, you but there's so many things throughout the day that we do to throw off that rhythm. Like taking naps, for instance, um, that's one thing you definitely want to try to avoid if you're promoting sleep hygiene. Um, really just because that nap throughout the day when you're starting to feel tired actually starts to release those hormones um, at the inappropriate times. So usually, you know, we start to feel tired at night and whatnot, but... Um, when you start taking a nap throughout the day, those hormones and that rhythm starts going at the wrong time of the day and that can really throw off the rest of your um, sleep schedule, not only for that day but potentially for the rest of the week depending if the type of habits that you develop. Um, another thing that we try to talk about avoiding is um, any kind of caffeine or caffeinated teas and alcohol um, four to six hours before bedtime. Um, those things, even though sometimes we like to think, you know, alcohol or a glass of wine helps to promote sleep, that's actually not the case at all and it actually um, introduces different types of chemicals and hormones in your body that actually keep you up and keep you stimul stimulated. So those are things you want to avoid. Um, you also want to try to avoid exercising. If you do have a good exercise routine, you want to avoid doing that at least a good couple hours before bed as well. Um, just because endorphins get released while you're exercising and those things give you energy and we don't want to promote energy um, when we're trying to go to sleep. Um, another thing that I thought was really interesting is to only use your bed for sleep and sex. And I thought this was such an interesting Thing. Um, I know I'm certainly guilty of watching TV, reading, studying in my bed, and my body gets doesn't associate my bed with sleep, um, and I think a lot of us have that problem. Um, so if we kind of train ourselves to even, even when we get up in the morning and do we do want to watch TV, go in a different room or get out of your comfortable bed um, so that we can actually train our bodies to want to go to sleep when we get into, into that comfortable room environment. I think that's really um, an important thing to kind of accommodate for yourself. Also, I thought it was interesting, um, going to sleep at the same time and waking up at the same time are huge for regulating your circadian rhythm and keeping that kind of melatonin flow going um, appropriately and that cortisol to be released in the morning. So even on the weekends and on your days off, it's really important to try to um, actually fall asleep and wake up at the same times, even, you know, we see that the weekends and we want to sleep till noon or whatever, but um, it's really important to try to maintain a good sleep hygiene by waking up at the same time in the mornings. And also to, to add to that, I think it's important to, if you have a bad night and let's say, you know, you slept only six hours and you are an eight hour person, 
The best thing you can do, aside from not taking the naps, is keeping your schedule. Make sure that you stay busy, focus, kind of fight through it. Find other ways to try to energize yourself. Um, exercise in the day. If you're tired and you really could go for a nap, go for a run or go for a jog. And if you have like body limitations, you have a bad back, do something. Move your arms up. Get Get your blood flow going because the most important thing is that you tire yourself out appropriately so when your, your melatonin kicks in that night, you can now reset your clock. And the whole, I think the whole key about promoting sleep hygiene, I think this is interesting too, is we always like to take our sleeping medicines at night and then take our, our coffee in the morning to wake us up. Our body is such a well-oiled machine that we actually have those natural hormones and things inside of us that do those for us. The melatonin is what puts us to sleep that we shouldn't need medications and waking up, you know, between 6 and 8 a.m. allows that cortisol to be at its highest level to actually feel caffeinated and energized and I think we get so distracted by those things that we think we need to add additional substances like, you know, melatonin or sleeping pills or, you know, our caffeinated teas and whatnot in the mornings. And they're not necessarily bad things, but um, to really get into a good sleep hygiene schedule, you shouldn't technically need those things because your body does it for you, which I think we need to just trust our bodies. They're, they do what they're supposed to do. We just kind of give them the right environment to do that. And I think finally, um, something like, that's really important just to know, like, you know, we, we nurture our babies and we, we, we give them lavender baths and we put the, the special uh, creams on them that help them go to bed and we, we give them their milk and then we, we put them to bed. But then we don't do the same thing for ourselves in adulthood. We don't have our nighttime rituals like we should. So, you know, we are running around all day. We go home, we shower quickly, and then we just throw ourselves into the bed. Something that's really important to do is, you know, if you're a music person, put on some soothing tunes before you go to sleep, close all the lights down, maybe get the, the blackout curtains. So it's a really dark, warm, quiet, soft environment. Um, and yeah, if you need some kind of stimulus, put on like a CD instead of putting on a TV that's going to literally stimulate your eyes, which are the portals to your brain. I think sleep hygiene is so um, vital because if you throw that off, that really has potential to throw the rest of your day off. You know, if you sleep till noon, one in the afternoon, and then, you know, you miss that breakfast and that healthy, those healthy eating habits, and you don't feel as energized as you typically would, and it just kind of throws off the rest of your day's schedule. Um, and it's difficult to promote just healthy living and healthy diets and all that when you're not sleeping right, you're not feeling energized enough and you're not eating right because you either overslept or didn't sleep enough or not, you know, finishing the activities throughout the day that you want to. So I think just sleep is really where the whole thing starts and if you wake up feeling good and energized, that's a really great precursor for the rest of your day. And I think too, just to add to what Caitlin said, you know, it's okay if you know, you get on this new program where you're going to try to sleep well and you're going to have good sleep hygiene. And if it doesn't work out as well for you, to not get discouraged. Because the important thing is that you're trying to live a, a, a better balanced life, a healthier life, and treat your body the way it should be treated. So the important thing is patience with yourself throughout your process and getting better sleep. Um, people who have been on sleep medications for a long time, you know, there's a lot of fear in and going off a of medication and trusting your body to, to do what it's naturally programmed to do. So I think um, to get proper sleep hygiene, yeah, follow all those, all those uh, guidelines, but also have patience with yourself and trust your body to do what it was meant to do.